we're going to play a game. Do you guys want to play together as a team? It's not competitive, so there's no winners. Or do you want to do it independently? Okay. Let me just get a few more. We'll get some more pins. Um, no, I'm good. Oh, thank you so much. Do you, do you need? Yeah. You're gonna <laughs> Perfect. What are we doing? We're gonna play a game. Good. We like games. Do you want to play? Thank you. So I'll explain here in just one sec. Do you need a? There we go. All right, does everybody have this? Do you want to play so you're not left out? I think you're the only one by yourself, okay? <laughs> All right, so we'll get started. Hi, everybody, my name's Lisa. Thank you, All right. I know I feel like I'm doing a presentation or something. Um, everybody enjoy the morning session? How many of you were here for both yesterday and today? And how many of you have learned something new? Yay. All right. So a little bit about me. I'm American. I'm from Oregon. Been in the, um, Australia for nine years. Actually, last Wednesday, I took my test to become a citizen. So that was really exciting for me. Um, and I passed, which was great. Thank you very much. Um, so I have a bachelor's of science in public health with an emphasis on sex ed. And for the last, oh gosh, 20 plus years, I have been selling adult bedroom accessories or relationship enhancement products, AKA sex toys, lubricants, arousal creams, all that fun stuff. So the, um, before I came to Australia, I worked for a company that did parties and I was the health educator. I went around all over Australia or all over the US and I helped educate the people that were presenting so that they knew the important stuff that they were sharing with everybody. And then I also worked with a lot of different doctors and clinics and organizations that dealt with women specifically that were having sexual side effects. That could be caused by trauma, it could be caused by being on um, various medication, but most of the time I worked with people that were going through cancer treatments. And a lot of times in the US, and you, you can actually answer this for Australia, maybe, in the US they only get eight, uh, eight to nine hours during their residency to learn about women's sexual health, unless they go on and further study you know, specialty. So a lot of times what we were finding is that women were told when they went to the doctor and they're like, I'm having pain during intercourse, um, I'm not getting aroused, I have all these other issues that are happening, all the doctors would do is say, here's a medication, mm -hmm. right? And we wanted to make sure that we helped people understand that there's a lot of different things that they can do to overcome those different side effects that they were experiencing without having to take a medication, right? So that's a little bit about me. I came to Australia with a company that I was working for Brought, uh, brought the brand here, did all that fun stuff. I left them about two years after I moved to Australia, so after about 15 years working with them. And then I became a consultant where I worked with a lot of different companies that sold this type of product, and I helped educate them again on what was needed, what people wanted to do, and all that fun stuff. Then I took a hiatus for a few years, moved to Darwin, and then during COVID I was really bored, and I thought, oh, I need something that excites me again and I got back into selling this type of stuff. So now I've aligned myself with this company. Oops, well, you guys saw that before you came in, it's okay. Just for Play, Just for Play is a boutique based in Pinelands. Anybody been there or know about it? Great, so you've learned something new as well. So it's in Pinelands and it's a boutique. So everything that was talked about during the session just a second ago with um, Sexyland, we sell all that stuff, but on a smaller scale. So there's nothing wrong with any shop, they're all great. The thing that we like to do differently is we like to really make sure that we're giving you lots of the education and giving you a safe, comfortable environment where you can come in and ask questions and it's not this massive space that you feel a little bit lost and overwhelmed. The other thing that we do are parties, but we do them in the shop. So we're only open Monday or Tuesday through Saturday till 6 p.m. So on all those evenings, we can do a party where you can get your friends together, you can do couples, and I do a little presentation and help you understand the different products and what it is that you would need and really work with you on an individual basis. So that's my background. Because you guys have learned quite a few different things today, I'm also filling in for somebody. So I could go over a whole lot of stuff, but I think it's most important to figure out what it is that you guys want 
So think about any questions that you've come across over the last two days that you didn't really get the answer to or you want more explanation on, and I can go through all that. I will be talking about some stuff, and I'm also gonna go over some of the most common questions I get over the last 20 years at parties, because these are common questions that no matter if I think, oh, everybody should know that, they really just don't realize that they're not knowledgeable or educated or it's not something that they've come across. So we're gonna talk about all that kind of stuff. But before we do that, we're gonna play a game. So this would happen if you were at one of my parties. We're gonna do a very simple game, and then depending on the time at the end, we're gonna play a little bit longer game. So what you need to do is you need to write down one chore you hate doing. Any kind of chore, it doesn't have to be sexual, and the reason why you hate it. So a chore you hate and why. A chore. A chore. chore. Sorry, it's the accent. And why. I forgot my water. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna grab my water bottle. Okay, everybody got their chore, but most importantly, the why. Okay, now, still got some writers. Do you mind if I start with you? So what you're gonna do is you are gonna cross out your chore, just put a line through the chore that you've written down, and you're gonna say, I hate sex because, and the reason that's listed. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and start. Uh, I hate sex because I hate sponges. I mean, look, some people love them. Next. I hate sex because I find it tedious. Yes, yes. I hate sex because I find it hot and tiring. <laughs> Next. I hate sex for not having a dishwasher. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm with you on that one. Um, I hate sex, it never ends repetitive and boring. <laughs> Is that laundry? No, yeah, cleaning. Yeah, in general, yeah. Um, I hate sex because it's a lot of effort and hot and sweaty. <laughs> I hate sex because it's very tedious and it's not perfect and all the little bits end up coming off the thing. <laughs> She's a detailed lady. <laughs> Next. Um, I hate sex because it takes too long. <laughs> <laughs> I hate sex. <laughs> I hate sex because it's fiddly and I'm not good at it. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna help you with that today. I hate sex because it's repetitive, boring, and sludgy. It's a lot. I hate sex because I don't do for others what they can do for themselves. <laughs> I hate sex because the same bloody time consuming. Yeah. And in the corner. I hate sex because it's yucky. Yeah, yucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do that during my parties because I just like people to loosen up and laugh. We have another game, hopefully I'll be able to get to at the end, um, that is kind of similar, but just really helping you understand that when you come into an environment where you're talking to somebody that's a sex educator, you want to make sure that it's, you know, just something that you're feeling comfortable in, that you understand that it is okay to laugh, some of the stuff that we learn um, and some of the stuff that I educate people on, I really like to give you the kind of clinical side, but in a fun way as well. So we're gonna combine both of that. Before I get into some of my most common questions, does anybody have any questions of some of the stuff they've learned over the last two days or that they've been dying to ask somebody and they just haven't had a chance yet? No. Okay, her brain's. Well, we might come up with some stuff. So one of the first questions that I get asked all the time, is, or not necessarily a question, but more of a statement is, my partner doesn't want to use any toys and I'm really into them, or I think that I could be into them, I just don't know how to incorporate it into our relationship, our bedroom, or wherever it is that you're gonna use them. 
So this is really, really common. And I can't say that it's women asking me because their male partners aren't doing it or vice versa. It really is quite um, similar for, for both sexes as far as how often I get asked this. And I would say very similar to what they talked about during the sexy land thing. It's all about really just opening up a dialogue and having the communication in a really comfortable environment and starting out small and working your way up. So they did talk about the bondage stuff. Um, and this is gonna be literally a repeat of several of the things that you guys saw earlier. But having a bondage set is really, really fantastic because you could do as simple as using the feather and that's just gonna give them an idea of something fun and different. You can put a blindfold on of them what she said earlier about taking one of the senses away, all your other senses are going to be a little bit more heightened and aroused. So it's such an easy way to incorporate something into your foreplay action or your sexual activity without having to go crazy and tying them up all over to different, you know, whatever. Another thing that's really popular and a great way to start trying new things is some form of massage. So how many of you like to give or get massages? How many of you like to get? How many actually like to give? A few of you. <laughs> so massage is amazing for so many different reasons, and I'm not gonna go into all of them, but some of the simple ones is the fact that the more you're massaged, the more your immune system works. So if you are somebody that tends to get sick frequently, getting massage, whether you're doing it to yourself or you're gonna go to a professional or your partner's gonna do it, is gonna help boost your immune system so it's gonna make you fight off those colds. It obviously helps release all the happy things inside of you. So if you're somebody that is a little bit depressed or sad sometimes just having a massage can help release those endorphins which is going to help get you in a better mood and then of course it's a fantastic way to incorporate foreplay now I do a little um, funny tip during the parties where I'll say if you or if your partner does not give a very good massage so for those of you that with partners here you might be thinking that's them what you can tell them is that you're going to reciprocate the massage that they're gonna give you. So they have to go first. If they give you the most amazing massage, it's 20 minutes, it's deep, it's wonderful, it's arousing, and they know that they're gonna get that in return, it's gonna be really fun. But the trick is, especially for men, sorry for those of you in the room that this relates to, what you're gonna do once you're starting to massage them, they get exci excited quite quickly. So if you just do something in an erogenous zone, they're gonna be like, forget the massage, let's get into some action so you're totally off the hook and you don't have to do it <laughs> so this is one of our massage mitts who would like to be a volunteer and I can give a quick little massage to their back yes that's all right I can give more than one so this is effortless you can literally just massage your partner it's rolling balls up here yep yep you are welcome. It's got rolling balls, so you can create as much pressure. I know you really want, are you sure? I've already tried it. Okay, good, scared. okay. <laughs> so you can create lots of pressure or a little bit of pressure, and it is going to help arouse all those different areas, which is gonna get you excited. The other tip about this would be if you are somebody that's on your feet all day long and you get really tired feet, you can put it on the ground, rub your foot on it, and give yourself a foot massage as well. So massage is a great way to start just using something that's going to incorporate into the bedroom that then they may think, hmm, I trusted what you just did. I'm interested in trying something else. So other things that you can do would be using, I'm just going to pull things out of my fun little bag here, a vibrator with the massage. So this would be called a wand. Wand is really just anything that's going to give more of a massage and a vibration to it. Let me turn it on. Oh, goodness. There we go. So this is really great. If for their, either partner, you're just going to rub it onto different areas. You can use it as just a massage. You can also put it on erogenous zones. So some people really like nipple stimulation with vibration. Some people like clitoral stimulation. Excuse me, stimulation. Men sometimes just like it rubbing on the inside of their leg. The great thing about trying something as simple as a wand, it doesn't necessarily have to look sexual. So this literally could just be a massage aid. And you can't do anything wrong with it. So you can really just explore and hit all those fun, pleasurable spots. Now this one is dual purpose. Since I have it all, I'll go ahead and share it with you. It's got a little section up here which has got a rolling ball. So you could have both of them together. You can have it so that just one of them's on. This one's got a pulsator. So this one's really designed to very much hit that clitoral area and give it lots and lots of stimulation. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the other purposes of this toy here in a minute, but since 
touches everything, I will pass this around so you guys can get an idea of what it feels like. So trying something as simple like that, when a toy aspect comes into play, that's very, very easy. There's nothing intimidating about it. It's just helping them understand the pleasure. Now, one of the things that she didn't talk about today was C-rings. Does anybody know what a C-ring is or a couple's toy? Yeah, so it's a C, or it's a circle that's gonna go around the shaft of the penis. Now, as you get more advanced with toys and your partner's a little bit more interested in exploring, you can use something like a C-ring. So a C-ring is designed to have penetration and stimulation at once. You can use this with a vibrator. So if you're solo and you don't want to have a penis involved, you can just put a vibrator inside of it, similar to that, and the, pen uh, the vibrator can give the penetration. And then up top is going to give you the clitoral stimulation. So this is really designed, as she mentioned before, that about 50 to 75% of women do not have orgasms just from the penetration alone. They really need that outside stimulation as well. So it's giving you the best of both worlds with something like this. Now this is also really pleasurable for a guy. It is a bit tight. That's important. You're gonna put this on a hardened penis, so a penis that is already um, erect. It is gonna restrict the blood slightly. It's not gonna completely like restrict it all the way, otherwise the penis will fall off and that's not gonna be fun for anybody, right? So it is gonna <laughs> be slightly tight and that helps keep the blood inside the erect penis. So it is gonna help him last just a little bit longer, but nothing crazy. The other thing that it can do is give you the vibration up top, or you can do it down below, and so it's going to give him a little bit of backdoor stimulation. Does that make sense? These are really multi-purpose. I'm a firm believer that if you can get product that you can use in a couple different ways, it's the more better. So you can use it without vibration. You can use the bullet all on its own. Bullets are phenomenal. I think if you've never tried a toy, and this is again going back to the wand, any type of simple bullet like this is giving you that idea of how to use vibration on the pleasurable areas. So it could be the temple. Vibration can really help relax you. If you're somebody that gets chronic headaches, the vibration helps make your headaches go away, so it's gonna be really good in that respect. You can use it on the outside of your cheek if you're given a blow job. That's gonna vibrate onto the penis, acting as a nice little hummer. You can also rub it on the taint area. Does anybody know what the taint is? Between the anus and scrotum. Correct. Um, so the medical term is perineum. Men have a perineum, women have a perineum. It's just the spot behind for women right, be um, right behind the vaginal opening and the anal area. For men, it's right behind the scrotum, right before the anal opening. So it's also called the taint. What else have we called it? Anybody know? I know we called the penis a lot of different things earlier this morning. So it's also known as the chode, the gouch, the bonch, the nacho, nacho balls, nacho butt, bitch. <laughs> and then my personal favorite, which is the ass ball connector. So that's the ABC. <laughs> so it's gonna be one of those areas, right? So all that is, the technical term being perineum, that is really pleasurable because it is right below where the prostate is. So we already just learned about the prostate a little bit. The prostate is um, the, fem the male G spot, if you will. It's a really pleasurable spot. The only way you can physically massage it and touch it is by going through the anal opening. Not everybody wants to do that or not everybody really knows how to explore that. So all you really need to do is create a little pressure on the outside on that taint area and it's massaging the prostate. So that's also what this little thing does or that. This can go right around the balls and it's going to create a lot of stimulation right on that perineum. And it's also gonna restrict a little bit of blood in the shaft of the penis. So if you don't want any vibration, you can throw this aside and just use a C-ring all on its own, okay? So C-rings, my second question that I get asked all the time are what are your th most popular products? Well, really what I get asked of, what do you love using, Lisa? And I just say, whatever you see a sparkle in my eye, that's what I like. But my top three products that I've sold over the last 20 years would be some form of C-ring, a lubricant, we'll just talk about it in a second, and a male stimulator. Has anybody ever seen one of these? No, okay. So, male stimulators. This is also called a masturbation sleeve. Does that make more sense? 
Yeah, okay. So masturbation sleeves are designed for hand jobs or blow jobs. This specific one is just a little travel size because you all need your masturbation sleeve wherever you go. So this is a little travel sizer. <laughs> this one only has one entrance. All right, the purpose of that is that when you're using it on the penis, it's gonna almost act like they're bottoming out, that they're hitting something. And for some penises, that's quite pleasurable. Now, you can use this if your partner really likes blowjobs, hand jobs, you're not really much in the mood. You can just sit on and watch TV. <laughs> Super fun, right? Okay. <laughs> it's easy. If your partner, um, like my partner is a FIFO worker, so he's gone for three and a half weeks at a time. So I throw this in his bag whenever he's gone. Have some fun. You can still have some pleasure. And we talked about how being sexually active is important. I want him to be sexually active with me and his hand. That's it. So these are really great. <laughs> these are really great to use for that hand job action. Now, there's also a lot of them, which are my favorite, that have a hole all the way through. The purpose of that is if you, again, want to do a lot of foreplay with your partner and he's a big fan of uh, hand jobs or blow jobs, his penis is going to pop out of that other end. You can just play with the head. You don't have to worry about the shaft. But it's also really good because sometimes certain positions or certain periods of our, of our life, women are a little bit more sensitive to penetration. So when you have maybe a longer shaft that you're dealing with or you're having a little bit of sensitivity by being too deep, he could actually put this on the penis, you jump on top and it's gonna act as a buffer. So it's gonna take a little bit of that length away from the shaft and then the other part is gonna stimulate your clitoral area giving you that pleasure as well. Now I am gonna come around to all of you and show you how it feels, all right? So what I need you to do, and the first of you are gonna be a bit lubed up. Oh, maybe I'll take the seal off. That will help. <laughs> All right, so when I come to you, I need you to give me one or two stiffies, just like this. You can look me in the eye while I'm doing this, but you don't have to, okay? Hold on, let me lube it up. Remind me I'm leaving trash right there. It's going to be really luby, okay? Stiffy, keep it hard. I'll do all the work. You gotta really lube it, thank you. There we go. <laughs> One or two? <laughs> oh, one's a tease, but it's nice. <laughs> he won't even look at me. <laughs> The noise is what was really great. I'll tell you another little trick about this one. I know this is just a water-soluble lube, so you can rub it into your skin, rub it. It's not going to stain your clothes, so. <laughs> I got to re-lube. So for those of you that have never felt the inside of vagina, I'm not saying that this is what it feels like, but you can get an idea of how that tightness can be pleasurable on the shaft. Oh. <laughs> oh wow, thank yeah, you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Oh, let me get it. Oh man. Nice, huh? Yeah. yeah. Let me just put a little bit more lube in there for you. <laughs> it's getting a bit dry. <laughs> did you did you want me to violate you? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Keep it hard. I just need one. There we go. Oh, that's a bit dry. All right. So these are very 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 popular couple things to know about these. Now, when I talk about how you can incorporate a toy into the bedroom, this is a bit of a cheeky thing to do. But if you really hate blowjobs, if you're one of them, and you really want to get off the hook, what you can do to your partner is you can be like, babe, I'm giving you a blowjob. Mine would be like, oh my god, it's not my birthday. So <laughs> I tell him to go lay on the bed, keep his eyes shut. I'll turn the light off. 
<laughs> I straddle him with my back facing his head. <laughs> Not a pretty sight, but. And then I just have one of these. I have it lubed up. I have the one that has the hole all the way through, and I bend over and I pretend. <laughs> they don't need to know anything, right? No, no, just kidding. So, um, <laughs> um, so this is this is just called an egg. So this is a basically a male stimulator. Yeah, male stimulator or male masturbation sleeve. Yeah, there's lots of different kinds out there. There's even some that have a vibrator in it. This is a very small one. This is easy for me to transport as my demo. So I would actually recommend if, one, you don't know if you're really gonna like it or your partner, you could go for something quite simple like this. But you can also go for some of the bigger ones um, that are gonna be more longer lasting, right? So it really just depends what you're looking for. So, it will stretch and fit all penises. It also can be flipped inside out, so it's quite easy to clean. This is a silicone material. You need it to be very stretchy. Um, it's also quite sticky because the you need it to be so flexible. It's gonna be a silicone that is a bit sticky, so cleanliness is really, really important. You can run this under warm water, flip it inside out, give it a good scrub, <laughs> not with soap. Um, toy cleaner, which I'll talk about here in a second, just put some of the toy cleaner on and rinse it back off. But the other really important thing about using these is that you need to use a lubricant that is an emollient base. Emollient base would be a uh, thicker, so more of a creamy base. Um, you, you can use water soluble and stuff, but for those of you that kind of got the end of me not um, re-lubricating, you could see how it got a bit dry and it wasn't very comfortable. You experienced that, cameraman, you experienced that as well, right? So if you're using it without a lubricant or a proper thick lube, it's not going to be pleasurable for them. But using something that's going to be long lasting is really good. Yeah. So these are awesome and definitely one of my top three products I would ever sell. And it is fun, a, a fun way. I, I've never come across in the 20 plus years of doing this that my customers have come back and said, I tried doing the thing that you told me about the blowjobs, because it really does work, and my partner's been angry. Like, nobody's ever said that. So it is a fun way to incorporate something, and then, of course, have the communication afterwards. Um, so then, I get asked quite frequently, about the fact that they're not really aroused. So women will say, I just am having a heck of a time getting aroused. That could be caused if you are on antibiotics, antidepressants, if you're on birth control, if you had a hysterectomy, if you've had, or going through menopause, if you're married, have children, or a job, right? So all of those things affect how easy and how often it is for us to get in the mood. Um, and that's just a few things, really. I mean, there's so many other things that can play to your arousal state. And one of the main things that you have to understand, and I'm sorry if this was already repeated, but everything that's happening on here is gonna reflect about what's happening down here. So if you're constantly in your head, if you're super stressed out, if you're having intercourse that you really wanna have and you're really enjoying it, but all you're thinking about is, do I smell? Am I doing it right? What about my dishes that I have to go wash? All those things, it's gonna na naturally affect what's going on down here. So the more that you can relax, the better but also adding some fun little arousal things into the mix is quite popular. So the first thing I'm gonna show, and I know a few of you guys have tested this out at my table, is a pheromone perfume. So who wants to tell me what pheromones are? Um, it's a, an hormone of sexual attraction. Yep, I'll yep. I want a better description than off the top. A simple description, yep. Anybody wanna go into more detail? Yeah, it's a, it's a chemical produced by animals uh, that helps to attract mates. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's the scent that we release that attracts people to us. Like we all have our own little natural pheromone, um, but we, if we can put more synthetic pheromones on us and people are attracted to us even more, why not? Right, so if your partner, if you wanna have a fancy dinner and you just wanna get in the mood and you're, you want your partner all over you, adding a synthetic pheromone can be really good for you. But this is also fun, take sex aside, if you're in a job that relies on sales, so if you're a salesperson, if you work in hospitality, where people, you're dealing with people all day long and you just want them to be nicer to you, adding extra pheromones on are gonna help with that. It's just this natural thing that you don't really realize that you're exuding, but it does just draw people to you and make them a bit nicer. 
as an American, I was in hospitality for years and we'd rely on tips and I could definitely tell a difference when I was wearing this when I wasn't. So what I'm gonna do, this specific product actually reacts to your own body chemistry. So we're all gonna have slightly different scent. I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna spray this on you in your cracks right here, okay? So I'm gonna put it in your crack, I want you to pump it, and then I want you to sniff each other's cracks so you can get an idea of the different <laughs> scents that it has, okay? <laughs> and this is unisex, so it's great for everyone. Oh, I feel like that was a cheat, there we go. Thank you. So most people have a bit of a fruity scent, but sometimes I get vanilla, I get, would you like some? I get a bit of a spicy scent, floral. <laughs> You're fruity? You're, Everybody's just gonna start coming into this room. They'll be like, what's happening? <laughs> And if you remember, try to smell yourself in about 15 minutes. No, that's not what I said. Are you musky? His ear is musky. Yeah. yeah. Now this is also going to be dependent on what's happening on your day. So if you're super hot, it could smell different than if you're super cold. For women, if you're on your period, it's going to smell different. Pregnant women don't smell good. <laughs> yeah, pregnant women usually are not very good at smell. They don't smell well. <laughs> so one of the things that I really like doing when I do parties or consults or I have people come into the shop so I can go over some things with them is I like to help them understand that sex is not just using a toy. It's not just having penetration. And I know that a lot of the, the speakers over the last two days have talked about that. It's the intimacy. But it's also about making us feel super good. This is, I mean, for 20 plus years I've been using this product. It is my favorite. It puts a smile on my face every time I sniff myself. And honestly, like I'm happy with that. that if that's what it's doing for me, yeah. you know, it just makes me feel good about myself because I like my smell. I think, well, I like my smell with this. I think it's fabulous. So um, having something simple like that is something that we really encourage women and men to look at. It doesn't mean that you have to go get something like a you know, sexy nighty or you have to do something super crazy. You could just put a smell that makes you good, you, you enjoy it and or your partner. So can I start? Yeah. You just do one squirt, do you wear it there specifically? Yeah, great question. So you would wanna put it where you normally excrete some of your natural scents. So that's usually in hot spots. Yep, so you could do it in under your arms, you can do it in your pits, you can do it behind your legs. Um, a lot of people put perfume naturally behind their ears, but you don't really sweat so much right there. Um, it is not a, a lickable item, so you could put it like in your groin, but just don't go and have it licked because it's gonna taste like perfume, right? It's not gonna hurt you, just don't put it internally anywhere. So you would put it, so the other thing to know is that you can't really smell yourself much after about 20 minutes, which is why sometimes if you get in an elevator, for instance, and you've got somebody that comes in with aftershave or perfume, you're like, whoo, what did that person do, bathe in it? It's most likely because they forgot or they can't smell themselves. So you don't need to do multiple sprays, but just know the, the special spots to put it. So you just do it once in the morning. Done. Yeah, look, I love it. So I spray it frequently. <laughs> Um, but you really only need to do it once in the morning. So when, what you were saying to about the oral contact, is it, it's actually suspended in alcohol, is it? Or it's in an yeah. alcohol solution? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's yeah. great. Just for chemical clarity, that's all. Yeah, 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 yeah. thank you. Yeah. All right, so that's your perfume. Um, another, and I'm kind of jumping around on a few different things, but 
if you have questions, just let me know. Another product that is really, really popular and something that one makes you just feel good and smell good, but also can arouse people is wildfire. Has anybody ever used this product? Yeah, do either of you want to talk about it? If you feel comfortable, why you like it? It smells nice. Yeah, I think it was, um, the fragrance is um, really lovely and I recall it being um, very smooth and slippery. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So Wildfire is an Australia product and this is all natural. And when I say all natural, one of the things that I love about products that claim to be all natural is when you can actually read every ingredient and you know what it says. So these have lots of different essential oils in it. Um, I'll pass it around so you guys can look at all the different things, but it's no, nothing that's going to harm you, obviously, unless you have certain allergies to specific things, so always look. But this is a foreign one, so you can use it as a massage oil. So you could use it with that mitt that I gave you. You can use it just by itself. You can also use it as a moisturizer. So if you're somebody that puts on lotion, this is Darwin, so it really just like runs off. This is long lasting, so you can put it on some of your dry areas and it's gonna moisturize, or moisturize you. You can also use it as a body oil or a bath oil. And you can use it as a lubricant. I personally recommend other types of lubricant, and I'll talk about that here in a second, but it is natural that you can use it as lubricant if you want. It's non-staining, long-lasting, and because of the different essential oils in it, these are all about arousal and intimacy, so these are ones that help get you a bit in the mood. So if you're somebody that has a really hard time getting aroused, but you don't want to use any type of clitoral creams or vibrators, it could be as simple as just putting this all over your body, and then you're like smelling it, and it's getting you into that mindset of having sexual activity. Um, for those of you that have tattoos, this is also really, really good because it's going to um, moisturize your skin. A lot of time you lose the color of your tattoo because you get super dry. So this is a product that's very long lasting, just a little bit, and it will rub into that um, tattoo, kind of revitalizing the color. So I'll pass it around so you can get an idea. Yeah, and there's also that same product, uh, brand has a spray, a room spray that you can put as well. Um, I think that, that that is by far the shop's number one selling product. Like we carry heaps and heaps and heaps. And in fact, I just did a party the other night and the, the um, gal that hosted it bought four bottles because she was so worried that we were gonna run out and we wouldn't have it in stock when she ran, when she ran out of it. So it is something that once you start using it, you kind of become addicted to it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I would say it's definitely great for massage oil, but even just making you smell good. The other thing that a lot of people wonder is, okay, if I put that on or if I put the pheromone perfume on, are people just going to want to hunt me all day long? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's dreadful, yeah. <laughs> um, the reality is, if you put something like this on or something like that, that does have an arousal state, a arousal aspect to it, it does not mean that all of a sudden you're going to put it on, you're like, woohoo, let's get dirty. No, nah, it means that if you are in the mindset, it will help make it better. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you put it on and it's this magic wand and all of a sudden you're going to want sexual activity. It's just going to increase it and it's going to help get you to the point of getting more aroused. Yeah, I think it, um, oh, I'll, I'll open it. Yeah. Um, most, um, just because of the, let me just pump this real quick and get a little bit going. Because some oils aren't good with latex condoms. Okay. Yeah. Even if it's a natural oil. Yep. Yeah. But usually like a lamb skin would be fine. Mm -hmm. um, whoo. I'm excited yeah. now. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, when you spray it, it's an oil, so it's not going to spray out. It's going to blop, blop out. I don't know if you want to call it that. This one is our red kind. There's also black and purple. The purple is the first one that they came out with. It's um, kind of like the mildest. This one is more designed for women because it has more of the essential oils that women resonate with. And then there's also a black one, which is more for the men. But our number one selling is the red one. Did you get a lot? <laughs>
want you to suck it and do your bit after we are realized. Yeah. So another question I get asked a lot, and Sexy Land did a great job talking a little bit about it, is um, women needing lubricants. So one of the most memorable things that I encountered when I first started doing this um, type of industry was that a woman had had a couple babies and after her second baby, she just had a really, really, really hard time getting lubricated. And so pain, sex was painful. And nobody, unless you want it to be painful, nobody should be going through sex in a painful state. And usually adding a lubricant is one of the easiest ways to rectify that issue. Um, pain and dryness during sex is uh, a variety of different reasons. Again, all that medication can affect you. If you've had any type of trauma, that can affect you. Not because you're necessarily hurt, but because your mind correlates with whatever the trauma was. And so it's affecting how, how natural lubricated you can be. So I tell everybody the number one thing I will say constantly throughout my shows is how important a lubricant is. And that doesn't mean if you're lubricated or not. If you're super lubricated, adding a lubricant is just gonna make things even better because it gives you a completely different texture to the sexual activity that you're having. Um, they talked about a couple lubes. I'm gonna talk about the difference. They didn't mention silicone. Did you guys hear them mention silicone? Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna talk about the difference between water-based and silicone-based. So those are the two main type of lubes. Water-soluble, water-based is um, a lubricant that is gonna kind of absorb into your skin. It's a little bit of a runnier lube, runnier feel. Um, it's great, there's absolutely nothing wrong. Most, most water-based lubricants are pH balanced for the female body, so it's gonna represent your natural lubrication the best. It's something that if you're gonna have a marathon session, may have to reapply several different times, but perfectly fine. Absolutely nothing wrong with water sol soluble, water-based lubricants. Um, and then there's also silicone. So anybody heard of a silicone lube? Yeah, who wants to talk about it? I've heard it, it, um, it's very, it seems very stiff. Stiff? It's sort of like, it's this, the viscosity is just it's sort of like sticky. Okay. Yeah, I prefer much prefer water-based lube, or, you know, regardless of the fact that it dries out very quickly. Mm -hmm. Just more application, more often. Yep. What's your experience with? Okay, so um, I prefer the silicon. Uh, it, it doesn't. You're right. The texture is different. The water-based ones, it just seems to get clay and dry. Or you, you, it, I describe it as something like a whole body, of, like um, wallpaper paste slapped up your fanny. <laughs> so imagine that, everyone. <laughs> it's not, you know, that's just my excuse. The, the silicon one is smooth, smoother, and it, I think it doesn't need reapplication. Yeah. It kind of lasts long. Yeah. Yep. Do you want to? Yeah, I think it's a lot smoother. Yeah. So I'll preface everything from now on with everybody has their own idea of what they enjoy. And I always say, if it is pleasurable to you, screw what anybody else says, right? Because it is all about what your body is, what you enjoy, what you're feeling, and also understanding that you are gonna constantly change. So, you know, today that silicone lubricant is super fabulous for you, tomorrow it might be a water soluble. I'm gonna come around, I am gonna show both. So we've got a water soluble and we've got a silicone based. Silicone basically doesn't really absorb into the skin. So it's gonna create a little bit of a barrier. So if you think about using it on the shaft of the penis or you put a little bit on, on the entrance of your vagina when you're having any type of penetration, it's gonna kind of create this nice little barrier which means that it's gonna be longer lasting because it's not just gonna absorb right into the skin. Um, and again, totally different preference. Now you're also gonna hear a lot, of, I, a lot of different people say, oh, you can never ever use a silicone lube with a silicone toy. How many of you have heard that? Okay. So that's not necessarily true. You wanna make sure that if you're using a silicone lube that it's a high quality. Um, so System Joe, which they mentioned a couple System Joe products are phenomenal. Um, this is Navy Swiss, these are good as well, or Swiss Navy. But also you wanna make sure that the toy that you're using is a high grade medical silicone. So this would not be a high grade medical silicone. And the main way that you can tell the difference is if it's sticky or not. Where's that wand? So this is a high grade medical silicone. So it's that very velvety feel. It's got a little bit of a, um, a denser feel to it as well. Whereas non high grade is gonna be very flexible. So I would not recommend using a silicone lube with 
our pink friend right here. Because what it does is it starts to disintegrate the product. And if you become a real big fan of your toy, you don't want it to disintegrate, right? So use um, a thicker emollient base for something like this or a water soluble for other non um, high grade medical silicone. Do you know if the use of lubrication has a different opportunity or like the, yeah, like the sperm and stuff like that? I mean, We've got some medical people in the room, so you can give your professional opinion, and then I'll give my other professional opinion. You've seen an alcohol in, in, in environment. So the vagina actually is, has a high pH. It's actually a relatively hostile environment, and it's your cervical mucus, the, the, the clear mucus that has got that perfect... Um, yeah, so I mean, I guess if you were trying to get pregnant and that was a really big issue for you, I might say stay away from the lube just in case. I can't imagine, you know, you just never know. You want, you want to go for a nice clear, clear, just using your natural cervix. If it's not about fertility, don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'd like to I really go away and check. So yeah, like I've read the question, so I'm a physio as well. Yes. And um, I have read that question on a particular forum. Yes. And I said, oh, I wonder. Yeah. If there is any impact there, because some people would say exactly what you yeah. said. Okay. If it's a um, fertility is a huge issue, then it's and I certainly don't rely on lube as a contraception. Yeah. I mean, that's the other well, alternative yeah. 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 like, Don't think it's going to be that disruptive. But that's not hard or fast. No. Yeah. And yeah, so there is some, like I've got some on our table, which is paraben free, like super natural, super um, sensitive, good for sensitive skin and stuff like that. For, I guess it's a, go ahead. To get pregnant, you got it, that cervical mucus is microscopically structured with channels that sperm can swim through. Yeah. So I, I doubt that something synthetic could replicate that, but yeah maybe we don't know well th this is what i uh, i love science i think science is amazing but when you look at anything health related i mean i remember 20 years ago they were saying tomatoes causes cancer you know what i mean like there's so many things that change over the years and female sexuality reproductive like it has not been studied to the level and i think you were mentioning it during your presentation you know it's not been studied to the level that we need it to so whilst i could say yes hard and fast it's fine absolutely not and it's also really important to understand what the ingredients are that's in certain products and not to just use anything um who was i think she was talking about ky jelly right so KY lubricant. So did you know, I don't know if you guys really carry it so much here in Australia as we do in the US, but we carry the tubes of KY at every single supermarket. And most of the time when people will come into my parties, they say, oh, I just use KY. So the reality is, is that KY, the thick lubricant was originally created for a speculum insertion. So that's when women are having their female um, exams and they have those gross metal things that are being inserted to you. KY was originally created to give that the lubrication. I mean, when I think about my yearly exam versus penis penetration or any type of penetration, they do not go together, right? So I want something, and that's also for a one-time insertion. So you have to really think about the type of lubes that you're using are also gonna be about what type of activity you're doing. If you're doing something with vigorous motion, so in and out, it's causing a lot of friction, you need to make sure that you're using a lubricant that's gonna stay in place and it's gonna to continue to give that moisture or that lubrication that you need versus something that would be just a one-time penetration. You don't need much more lubrication than that. Yeah, so I can't say 100%, but I also would say if you're trying to get pregnant and pregnancy or uh, penetration is really, really painful because you're not naturally lubricating, that's also going to make a massive effect because you're never going to want to have it. And your mind is also going to be shutting you down because you're thinking, oh my God, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. So it's, you know, that, that balance of figuring out what, what works for you and then talking to your doctor and um, trying a few things out. Yeah. The great thing about lubes is that there are probably 200 different brands. System Joe alone, which is one of the, the brands that I really recommend. Um, I just was talking to the, one of the reps for the company the other day, and I want to say they have about 54 lubes just in their brand. 54. That's crazy. So some are flavored, some aren't flavored, some are silicone, some are hybrid. So hybrid would be a combination of a silicone and water soluble together. And that means that it is 
not 100% silicone, super silky smooth. There's a product that they have called Agape, and Agape is really designed for women that are going through endometriosis and have some medical issues that they need a little bit of that slipperiness from the silicone, but they also want the pH balance aspect of the, the water base, so it's that combination of them. So there's a lot of really different ones, and it's about trying them out. We carry at the shop lots of different satchels. So you could go in and buy like three different satchels and try all three of them to see what works for you or what your preference is. So what I'll do is I will come around. I know that you guys tried it out the other one, but I want you to see the difference between silicone. So just give me the top of your hand. I'll put them both on, rub them together. We'll rub them with your finger so you can get an idea. See, this one's obviously much thicker. So the blue bottle is uh, water-based and the red one is silicone. Yeah, you can physically see the difference just as it, as it coming out of the bottle. Yeah. I know. Normally I have tissue, so I apologize that I didn't bring any with me. Oh, that was a tea. Sorry. Um, the blue is water, water and this is silicone. For sensitivity, either of them would be fine. For you, because you have a lot of allergies, I would go for the agape, personally, which I didn't bring, but yeah. Sorry. So these also have no flavors or scents to it. I'll put the other one on there, does that matter? No, Maybe. I'll just put it right here so you can. So explain to me what, why you would choose one over the other. Um, most of it's personal preference and also what activity you're gonna do. Oh, yeah. yeah, I feel. So again, people will say, well, what should I get? The first and foremost thing is for you to see which texture you like better. Like that's the, the easiest way to kind of start filtering them out. If you really like the feel of the silicone, then try different brands of silicone. If you really like the feel of the waterproof, then try different brands of the waterproof. Now another product or another question is when women come into the room and they say that their partner has a, a difficult time lasting very long. Um, so that could be the three pump chomp or the two stroke joke. <laughs> kidding <laughs> the ones that just don't last long enough that can be caused by lots of different things as well and a simple response for some people is maybe your partner just drank too much that night and it's just not gonna it's just not gonna happen um, so those are things that happen to everybody but if your partner needs to last a little bit longer for you on a regular basis some of the things that you can try would be prolong creams has anybody tried a prolong cream so prolonged cream, this is just sample sets. This gives you two swabs. This is a natural product, and it is a product that helps kind of desensitize. It doesn't numb. It just takes a bit of the sensation away from the shaft of the penis. So once the penis is hard on the main vein, so the underside of the penis, you would break open the swab and just dab this on that area. Let it soak in for about three to five minutes. That's the time for foreplay the F word we never really get, right? So it's gonna help get you into the mood. It's that excuse that your partner does need to give you foreplay. And then it's gonna help just desensitize him a little bit, helping him last a little bit longer for you. So these are really, really popular. And the great thing about the swabs is that they're, this one gives you two, but it's a one-time um, application. You can toss it away. You don't need to use very much. There are a lot of other products out there. We carry some of them that have, um, Benzocaine or what's the other word I'm looking for? Benzocaine or it'll come to me. Lidocaine. 
yeah, lidocaine in it. So that is gonna numb that area. Um, that's a little bit more for the intense, if you really need it to last a lot longer. So if they're having erectile dysfunction, dysfunction issues, once he can get hard, you can put that on and it's gonna make him um, hopefully last a little bit longer for you. But this is a great way to try something without having to commit to an entire product and seeing if it works for him or if it doesn't. So these are quite popular. Um, Yeah, it actually comes in a spray. Yep, yep. Um, and then, of course, we've got the arousal creams for women, which are a very popular product. How many of you tried it on the inside of your gum? Yeah, how many of you liked that sensation? It was quite intense, I have to admit. Like, I, <laughs> I've sold this stuff for years, and I've actually never tried it there. That was in, intense. Um, there are a lot of different products on the brand, or there are a lot of brands on... Um, available. I would say try something, because there's so many of them, try something mild first if you've never tried anything on the clitoral area. What those are designed to do is designed to help get the blood pumping. So it's going to pull the blood to the erogenous zones, getting you in the mood a little bit faster and a little bit easier. But you don't want to use something super, super in intense. And because a lot of those do come in level of strengths, I can't speak for that one because I actually haven't used that one, but most of them come in like a mild, medium, and intense. Try with a small one, just test it out, see what happens. I always say if it's super simple and it doesn't arouse you too much, it's a great product to take to your job. So if, in case you're having a bad day, you can just go into the bathroom during your break, put a little bit on down there and smile's gonna come across your face. <laughs> so you can always start with the mild for that one and work your way up if you need to. All right, so any questions on those? Okay, I think we're about done, but I'd love to, so I kind of was all over the place because I didn't know what was going to be covered by everybody else. I'd love to answer any questions that you guys have, whether it's from sexual side effects that you might be dealing with and ways that you can do something about it without having to take a medication or any of the products. I've got some stuff out on display and for sale if you want. I do have some grab bags that's got for boys, for girls, for couples. There's about $110 worth of product for 50 bucks and it's a grab bag. So there is something that vibrates in every one of them, which is fun. And then there's a lubricant. In fact, I think some of the couple toys have that BJ Blast that they were talking about in the little demo. Yeah, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Um, but I will be here the rest of the day. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Yay.